morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning to you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the increase of one more day. We ask, Lord, that you bless it in a powerful way, that it may be well spent by each and every one of us on the things that matter most that you have applied to our lives. Lord, we thank you this morning for your grace. We thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Lord, we thank you that as we gather together in your name here today, we know that you're in the midst of us. And Lord, I thank you, God, that, that those of us that have Jesus Christ in our heart, the one and only Savior, Father God, I thank you that as we pray to, and we reach the throne of God in heaven through the fuel that, fi, that fuels the prayer, the name of Jesus Christ, that, Lord, we know that we are heirs in Christ, and we know that, that all things, we've got a new address change. We, we are seated in heaven with you at the moment, in our souls. We thank you for that guarantee that we have. Oh, in this flesh, we're not worthy. We know that, Lord. In this flesh, uh, if we were all judged by our flesh, not a single one of us would get into heaven. Praise God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father God, I thank you. And now, Lord God, I just lift up a special prayer for us this morning. As we have... As we have the Edwards in our midst, our beloved family and of God here at New Testament Baptist Church, Brother Danny, Sister Mary, Caleb, their grandson. Father God, I, I pray that, that in, their, in their most trying tribulation in their lives, that there are several here who have unfortunately had to taste and walk that walk. But Lord, I know I'm not one of them. And now, Lord, I just pray that as I lift this petition up to you this morning in the loss of their son, Eric, that although it's a gain for you in heaven, it's a tragic, tragic loss here. And Father God, I pray your Holy Spirit that you will just come down and be amongst them during this time of this service this morning in such a powerful healing way that I don't have the words to even express. But I know I have an intercessor in you, and you know, and you can take that before our Heavenly Father. And I know that your word, and I know the prayers of the saints are like a sweet-smelling savor to your throne. So, Father God, in just a moment, I'm going to ask for the saints in this house to just pause for a moment. Pray in their own way to the one and only powerful God that sits on the throne in heaven through the name of Jesus Christ to be with this family. And Lord, I'm going to trust that that sweet-smelling savor of all the saints in this house coming up to you are not going to return void. They're going to come back via your Holy Spirit to bless the void in the hearts of of the families we've asked. So Father, I will pause now as the saints in this house offer that prayer up to you in their own personal way. In 
Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can all be seated. Danny and Mary, you know, and Caleb, you all know you're loved here today. That's the best we can do in our human frailty. I just want to share quickly as we'll move on with the service. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 3, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort who comforted us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Amen. Amen. And Danny and Mary, I want you to know in the days to come, your church family here, God has a reason for everything, and I can't explain it. But I do know this. I do know that there are others in this church that have had to walk where you're walking today. And I know that there, as God has comforted them, they will in turn use that comfort towards you. So I pray for the receptiveness of that. I pray for God's will to be done in that. And I pray that Satan, that the hedge will be about this whole of family, that there's no way he can break through. Amen. Amen. Share some announcements with you real quick. Um, our Bible reading marathon group that went to Washington, D.C., thank you so much for the beautiful card and uh, all the, the kind words in the card. I appreciate that, and I appreciate that creamery ice cream certificate, too. <laughs> it's, you know, it's not easy to lose weight being a Baptist pastor, <laughs> but that's okay. When the roll... It's called up yonder, right? All right. Um, our deepest sympathies for the tragic loss of, of Eric. And uh, calling hours are going to be held, church family, uh, this Thursday from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. here at the church. And then the service will be at 11 a.m. on Friday at at noon, there'll be a one hour calling hours at 11 a.m. until noon at that time. And um, again, again, Danny, Mary, Caleb, if there's something you guys need, you don't, you're not imposing on anybody here. You reach out to us and we'll be here. And if I can't do it, I'll find somebody who can. So, amen. The uh, new days of praise are available in the vestibule out on the table. The outside of the church looks beautiful. Thanks for all those that make our landscaping and the flower gardens and the cutting of the grass and the weed whacking and just all of those things. Appreciate that. Uh, the Agee family, they're going to be in here staying in our missions apartment on Thursday night and Friday night. Uh, they will be down at the Black Horse Baptist Church on Friday night at 7 p.m. Uh, you are all welcome to go there to see them if you'd like to do so. Ladies of Faith will meet in the Fellowship Hall on Saturday, May 28th at 11 a.m. There also is a sign-up sheet on the table in the vestibule for that as well. That uh, is all the announcements that I have this morning. Scripture reading is by Sister Kathleen Rittenhouse. Good morning. I'm reading from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search, when ye shall search for me, with all your heart. Brother Danny Edwards wanted to come up and share something with us. Are you up to that, Danny? Yeah. Okay.
Good morning, church. I want to thank you for being there in our time of grief. We've been getting a lot of mail, and there were a couple verses that people wanted me to read. They didn't want me to read it in church, I guess, but I wanted to read it. It's Psalms 34, verse 8. They are want me to read this to help us in our time of grief. Psalm 34, verse 18. It says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and, a sa and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. That was the one verse in one piece of mail. And the other one was... In Revelation 21, verse 4, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. I just want to let you know, too, this is my wardrobe. My son has a wardrobe this big in his closet. And I just thought this was a shirt I would wear. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Pastor. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> there are times in your life when circumstances will happen that you don't understand and that will drive you so low that you feel so depressed, so destroyed, that there are no words that you can use to express how you feel. And you end up, and all you can do is, hmm, right? But you know there's someone who lives inside of you who knows exactly how you feel because he's with you every day. He's been you. He's been with you through all of your happenings. And he knows exactly how you feel. So when he takes your prayers right to the throne of God, he can't express in words how you feel either. So he takes your groanings right to the throne of God. He feels so deeply for you that all he can do is groan. And God hears those prayers. And in time, he bathes you in his love. And you come out of it. And you realize, you know, there is a God who cares for me. And he has everything in control, even though I do not understand. But I, been there, know what you're talking about. And one thing you need to do, one, turn to God. Secondly, turn to each other. Find yourselves in the love of God and in your love of each other, and you'll get through this. But that Holy Spirit is in there, and he knows exactly how you feel. And he takes your groanings right to the throne of God, and he lets God know exactly how you feel. hard to sing a song after that I mean but all that thrills my soul is Jesus 463 let's sing just a couple verses and 463 
crew you are. Amen. I don't know how we could go through this world without each other. First with the Lord, because you're the gift that we have to each other. And uh, he gives us, he doesn't make junk, does he? It's good to see Brother Steve and Sister Margaret back this morning. He's, uh, looks like he's doing better. She must be real tough on you, brother. <laughs> okay, yeah, she took, looks like she took care of you. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Let's see here. I'm going to ask. Um, I'm going to ask um, Brother Chuck Sangston if you would. Would you lead us in prayer for the offering? probably going to stay right there, aren't you? Well, JJ, are you ready? Amen. Yeah? That, that ornery grin and all, huh? Amen. I think we have you all set up here. Can you get on that stool okay? okay.
Awesome job, JJ. Amen. You know, in the millennial kingdom, the scripture says, and that a little child shall lead them. Yeah, you got a little preview there, didn't we? Huh? Amen. Thank you. Keep that up. Keep that up. Well, I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles to uh, the book of James. We've been studying the book of James on Sunday night, so we're going to get a little peanut butter and our chocolate here this morning. But that's okay. That's the way the Lord had led me to do this. It's interesting that as the week started off, um, this past week, the old week that's behind us, on, uh, I, I was down on, on Monday after I had come back from the Haven and doing a couple of other things. I went down and began to put my outline for Wednesday night on the board in the fellowship hall. And uh, <clears throat> I knew it was a rather short outline. And, and I thought, well, I may... I may add to it, I may add to it, uh, but I didn't have a piece with adding to it. As a matter of fact, on Tuesday with the missions committee in that morning, on Tuesday morning, I said, you know, they, were t they figured they had to jump on things. They were taking notes and make, taking pictures of the outline as they normally do. And I said, it may not be finished, I don't know yet. But I, 
I really did not have a, for whatever reason at that time, I had no peace about extending the length of that outline. And of course, on Wednesday evening, Brother Danny called me to tell me, the, give me the tragic news of the loss of their son right before Bible study. I was here get, preparing to get ready for Bible study. I say that to say this because, <clears throat> you know, it may not be any, may, maybe nobody else would understand this but me because I'm the pastor. Um, but it was obvious to me that the Lord was, on Monday, he was already ahead of me, which, which is why I didn't have a peace with extending that outline because I knew I was going to have to break this tragic news with really very little notice to everybody on Wednesday. You got it almost simultaneously with me at the same time that, that uh, I received it. And so we just needed extra time for prayer, and, uh, and the Lord knew that. Same way with the message this morning. He, he took me totally out of my game on the message this morning. Usually, usually <clears throat> I would have been, you know, two or three days before today, I would be tucking myself away somewhere that I could hide, whether in a corner, whether away from the phones, in the office, whether fellowship, wherever I could find to hide. <laughs> you know, go, the Lord, he went off to pray. He went off by himself. I would have to go out by myself, just me and him, to be able to take time to get that message together. So the message I, I preached today, he gave me. Um, he gave me early in the week. And, and I just couldn't get away from it. He, so I keep making notes on my phone and pen and stuff down, stick it in my pocket. And, and uh, so actually put it all, the rough draft together in, last night in my outline for this morning. So he worked on this message pretty early. And so somebody needs it. And, uh, and I know it's, I'm probably the first one that needs it. <laughs> so we'll pass that along, huh? Amen. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we, as we prepare to break the bread of life, we pray that, that we take your word today, you take your word today, and, and you feed it to us, uh, change our lives. May we grow in Christ. Uh, Lord, should there be one here without Christ? I don't mean just to be religious. I mean without Christ. Uh, Lord, may they change that today. May they accept that free gift that you've given them that we've already talked about, uh, looking for the peace, the comfort, and, and uh, the guidance. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going Roman Baptist because I can't stay behind the pulpit very much. <clears throat> Wisdom and the understanding heart. You know, the, the wisdom of God, what is it, church, to this world? That's right. There you got it. The scripture tells us that the wisdom of God is foolishness to this world. We're going to see a picture of that in God's word today. But l let God's word lead us and teach us today. And, and, and let's, let's take it in. And let's take it in, not thoroughly, but throughly. You see, thoroughly means I'm sitting here in the midst of it. It's, I'm surrounded by it. But to take it in throughly means to actually take it into yourself. Take it into your soul. Take it into your spirit. Take it into your mind uh, that we might have that. I look at James chapter number one this morning with you. <clears throat> As always, there'll be a number of scriptures. But let's read this. James chapter number one, uh, verse number five. If any of you lack wisdom... Now, we're not talking about the wisdom of the world. Understand that. We're talking about the wisdom of God. There is a big, big difference. If I say that, um, if, if I say that um, uh, I'm going to chop this microphone stand into three pieces to hold that microphone, you're all going to look at me like what? You're going to look at me with the wisdom of the world. You're going to say you're crazy. But what if the Lord led me to do it that way? You're still going to look at me. If you're looking at me through the world's wisdom, you're going to say, I'm crazy. <laughs> but with the Lord's wisdom, remember, it's foolishness unto the world. So <clears throat> God's already where I'm going to go. He's already where you're going to go as a child of God. Now, I'm not talking about if you're lost, that you count yourself out of that. But if you're a child of God, he's, al he's already where you're going to go if you're in his path and in his will. He's already there. He beats you to the punch. 
If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That sounds like such a simple formula to you and I, but it's not so simple because what we have to do, we have to, we have to strip our pride. We have to get our flesh out of the way. We have to, uh, re, re, we have to admit, I don't have the answer. We have to do all those things. We have, to, we have to get ourselves out of the way to, to trust God in that. So let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it, I like this. But see, here comes, here comes an issue of faith and belief. It shall be given to him, unto him. It shall. And then he goes on to tell us, but let him ask in what, church? Faith. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. Let him ask in faith. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the sand and tossed. For let not, your, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And right next to that scripture in red ink, I have the word ouch with an exclamation mark for myself. Ouch. That that's a stomp on my toes, kick me in the shins and the derriere all at the same time. Because it says, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Which means we have to take ourselves 100% out of the way and trust God. Our emotions got to get out of the way. Our flesh has to get out of the way. And we have to have 100% trust in God. Amen, church? That's what, this, that's what the scripture is telling us. For, and he says, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So asking doesn't mean you're going to receive. You got to be asking in faith and then getting out of the way. Getting out of his way. I get in God's way all the time. Number eight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's the view of, the, of God this morning. So, you know, when do I need wisdom? Oh, I pray for wisdom every single day. I pray for that general wisdom, like, Lord, just, you know, lay it on me wherever I'm at. But then there's times, this week has been one of those times. This, this week to minister to two people that I love tremendously in their family. I've needed God's wisdom. I don't need my word. I need his words. I need his wisdom. I need to be able to give, bring comfort to something that I know nothing about. So I need God. And that's the faith that we have to put in him. And we've all been there in certain situations in our life. I need wisdom during hard times. I need wisdom during stressful times. I need God's wisdom uh, of, uh, during things of great importance when I have no ability to know what the outcome is going to be. I just have to be able to trust him with everything that I can trust him with. And man, the devil likes to get in, and get in between you and that trust big time. But I want, to listen, I want us to listen to the wisest man in the world according to our Lord. Who's the wisest man in the world according to our Lord? Solomon, King Solomon. So we're going to take a look at something, so a few things from him today that's going to help us understand, and God wanted us to have this reference. Go to Proverbs chapter number 2. Proverbs chapter number 2. See, I'll give you a little Bible test. Solomon was the son of David. David. And Solomon was chosen as king instead of his father. His father did some crazy things. Anybody know what his father did? Let me, if, you, do you, if, you, if you know what his father did, raise your hand. Okay. Well, since there's not that many hands, I'm going to tell you what his father did. His father, David, stood on his rooftop, and he looked out across the way, and he saw this girl that captivated his eyes in great beauty. Her name was Bathsheba. 
So he sent for her, had her brought over to his little palace. Am I there? She had a husband. He had his way with her. Speaking in terms that you can understand. That didn't make God very happy. So that made him a what? That made him an adulterer. It showed, it showed you and I through this story that God has given us in the scripture. It's kind of like when we're out working in the yard. We dig a hole for something cause, and we need dirt. We fill it in and there's never enough, is there? It settles. So what do we got to go do? Go dig another hole. <laughs> how much sense does that make, right? Well, so, God, this, so th this was how David was thinking. David had to dig another hole because now she's with child. He's an adulterer. He's had his way with another man's wife, but this other man's wife, this, his name was Uriah. And he was in the king, he was in David's army. So he conspired and thought, ah, I know how to wash this away. I will make him leader of my troops and put him in the forefront of the battle. He did that. Guess what happened? He got killed. He conspired the murder of this woman's husband to cover up his sin. He, 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 he had dug a hole. The dirt went in it. It settled. He had to dig another hole. And many other things David did, but here's the greatest thing that David did. David repented of his sin. He's an adulterer, a murderer, and God forgave that sin as far as the east is from the west. And we're going to see a, just, a, just a smidgen of something that he said today. And so now his son Solomon God anoints him as king. I didn't have any of that in my notes. <laughs> so here comes Solomon in Proverbs chapter number 2. He says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thine incline thy ear unto what church? Wisdom. And apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, her meaning this wisdom, this godly wisdom, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. In church, I want you to hear verse number seven. He layeth up sound wisdom for who? For, for the righteous. You know who the righteous in the church age is today? Those of us who are covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We are the righteous. He lays up sound wisdom for us. And he will give it to us if we ask him for it. But we have to believe in faith. As we read in James. He's a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. His saints. When we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're a saint. We don't have to be canonized by some church. We're canonized from on high. And what a blessing that is. How did, how did Solomon get, get here? How did he get this kind of wisdom? How, did he, how was he able to... to to pen these words through the, through the verbal, plenarily God-breathed uh, words of God. How was he able to, what happened in his life that he was able to do this? Go over to 1 Kings chapter number 3. 1 Kings chapter number 3. See, a king at this time, <clears throat> a, a king was also a judge. He, he had to 
people would bring their problems before him and he would have to make judgment over these things. Or he would have to judge the actions of folks. Uh, uh, good, bad, evil, breaking of laws, doing all of those kind of things. And that's the situation that the wisest man in the world, according to the word of God, uh, was in. And, but how did he come to this position? Look at chapter number 3 in 1 Kings, verse number 16, if you would, please. Verse number 16. He had something confront him one day. It says, then, then came there two women that were harlots unto, unto the king. And they stood before the king. And the one woman said, oh, my Lord, and, this, and I and this woman, we dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. So what she's saying is, we live in this same house, and I gave birth to a child. And the only person, the only other person in this house was her. And there's something else about this other her, this other harlot. She was also with child, and she gave birth three days later. That's the situation that came before King Solomon. I want you to know and understand that we're talking about around the time of, of 1,015 years before the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So there was no... Uh, 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 Match.com, there was no DNA, there was, n there was no paternity test through the blood, there was none of those things. So, so Solomon was going to need the wisdom of God here, wasn't he, he had to settle this problem that come before him. And as it come before him, he says, <clears throat> the woman says in verse 18, as it came to pass the third day after I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we the two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid on it. She laid on her child and, and it suffocated. So now the king hears the story, but now the dilemma. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son. So there's a tug of war over the baby that's alive. And the dead is thy son. And, and this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. I can imagine King Solomon's just wanting to go, Shut up! Already. But in verse number 23, Then said the king, he speaks up, The one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is the living. I want to watch this silly, crazy world who, who's going to look at God's wisdom as foolishness. Right here's a great picture of it, church. Right here is a great picture of it. And the, and the king said in verse 24, bring me a sword. Remember the illustration I gave you about this microphone stand? The king said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two. And give half to the one and half to the other. Could you imagine the, could you imagine the king's servants has this man got off the edge? Has this man gone goofy? What's up with him? Go to verse 5 in the same chapter. You're going to back up all the way to verse number 5 now, if you would, please. And we see that in verse number 5, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. 
according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept him for this great kindness. And thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child, Solomon said. I know not how to go in or come out. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant, watch what he asks for, church, an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? He showed great humility before God. That's a lesson for us. King Solomon showed great humility before God Almighty. He, he, God said, what do you want? God said, what do you want? You know, there's people on, the, there's people, I hope none in here, that if, you know, if God said, hey, what do you want? Well, I'll take a brand new Indian motorcycle. See, to some people, God's a genie. To other people, he's already at tomorrow before I get there. So he already knows what I need. Verse 10 says that the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon asked this thing. He asked for that understanding heart. He wanted God's wisdom. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked for the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment, behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before in thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. You know what God just said there? There has never been anyone with the wisdom of Solomon. And there will never be anyone who can match the wisdom of Solomon afterwards. That's awesome. That's, that's a pretty good gift, isn't it? I keep asking God for those pieces of that gift every day. Take some of that away from old brother Solomon and give it to me. But we all need that gift, do we not? We all need that gift. How do we acquire such a gift? We've already read that. We need the humility before the Lord. We need, he, we need to be recognized as his servant. We go on to see that in verse number 13, and I've also given thee that which thou hast not asked. We serve an awesome God, don't we, folks? Both riches and honor that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all these days. But there's a condition to all of this in verse number 14. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. There's so much right there, folks, that I could... I, I can't do it justice, but I can tell you this. If you could imagine being Solomon here and what the Lord just said about his father. So the wonderful thing about fathers, this is a good Father's Day message, but the wonderful thing for us dads, where we fail and we become like David and we go back to the Lord and we ask for forgiveness and we confess our sin to him, and we repent and turn away from that, he doesn't even remember it anymore. He doesn't even see it anymore. David, an adulterer, a murderer, all these things, at the least. What kind of father is that? What kind of father is that? But God said in verse 14, if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and commandments as thy father David did. You see, that, sweat, that slate was wiped clean. We can kick ourselves, dads, all we want. It won't wipe anything off the slate. 
But man, when we give it to the Lord, it's gone. See that? Gone. I don't think we have too many adulterers and murderers combined here together today. What a, what a, what a feat. What a promise there. But now I want to go on and take you someplace. Because this wisdom, this understanding from God that confounds the world and they find foolishness is, is severely lacking in Christianity today. It's a discipline uh, of humility and seeking God's will and asking for understanding and wisdom rather than serving our own flesh. There's that conditional promise which we have read. Please go with me to Proverbs chapter 3. We're getting close to that time here. That's a good buy-off line, isn't it? We're getting close to that time. Of course we are. We're not at the beginning of the outline. Proverbs chapter number 3. I think everybody here probably knows these verses, but knowing them and believing in them are two different things. Verse number five, trust in the Lord with how much of our heart? All of it. All thine heart. And lead not unto thine own understanding. When I'm in those times of trial, my flesh wants to reason and reason and reason with me. Wants me to use the world's way and man's way and my own conscious way while the Holy Spirit of God is going, you know better than that. you got to die to yourself at this moment. You need to ask for God's wisdom. And then you need to stand down in all these things that you're thinking about. And you need to let God's wisdom come to you and prevail. He's laid it up for you. He said that. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In all thy ways. Be not wise in thine own eyes. In other words, don't let ourselves think that we've got the best answer going here. Fear the Lord. And do what? Depart from evil. Yeah. Those are words that we need to have written in our heart that we might not sin against him. Lean not unto thine own understanding. What does the application of God's wisdom look like in our lives? How, do, how can we apply God's wisdom today in our lives? You're in Proverbs. Would you flip over to chapter 25? Chapter 25. And here we're all going to step into the same shoes with each other. Here we're all going to, we're, we're going to be in the misery loves company boat together. Every one of us. Nobody's going to be excluded from this. <clears throat> because in the, flesh, in the flesh, if Brother Paul offends me, what do I want to do? Church, come on, church. Get him back. I want to get him back. I want to get him back. And so do you, all of you. You know how I know that? Because the Bible tells me so. Thank you, John. So your pastor's no better than you. Where the better comes in is when the Holy Spirit goes, whoosh, the great restrainer says, and I hearken unto him. And I hear him. And so I go. 
Now, it helps when my bride's standing next to me going, sweetness. <laughs> sweetness. <laughs> that helps. That helps. But God gave her to me. If he takes her home before me, just don't get in my way. <laughs> I hope he takes me first because I don't want her to get there and booby trap things for me. Because <laughs> I know she will. I know she will. She'll be up there with Brother Eric conspiring. The application of God's word looks like this. If thine enemy be hungry, read it with me, church. Give him bread to eat in verse number 21, chapter 25 of Proverbs. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, what do we do? Give him water to drink. And, and there's a promise here that we have total control over. Total control over. In the next verse. Read this out loud with me. For thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. If I want to get back at Brother Paul for offending me, you know, I'm going to get back at him. If he's hungry, I'm going to feed him. If he's thirsty, I'm going to give him the drink. And I'm going to pray, Lord God. And you know what I'm going to do thereby by doing so? I'm going to heap coals of fire upon his head, but it requires me to do it. Right there it is. God didn't say he's going to do it. Look at what he said. He said in verse number, 20, number 25, what does he say? Number 22, I'm sorry. For thou shalt heap coals of fire. Well, you know what? When I, come, when I, when I, come, when I became a mature Christian and I... I got that. Oh, boy, I started praying for a whole lot of people. <laughs> Amen? I started praying for a whole lot of people. Man, I was, here, you need something from the grocery store? Hey, you need something to drink? Huh? Huh? Boy, I'll tell you what. And I've won, through the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ, some of my greatest enemies to Christ. Some of you boogers are here. That'll make everybody look around. God's good. Now, how do you and I apply this? How do we apply it? We see, we're seeing what the application looks like, but how do we apply this? Now we get, the scripture goes in a little more depth if you go over to the New Testament. Uh, this, is, this is the wisdom of Solomon way back there in a th around 1000 BC. Let's step it up. Let's go clear up into the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Romans 12, we'll be ending in Romans this morning, but in Romans chapter 12, <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verse number 14, the word of God says, bless them which do what? What did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount? Blessed are ye who are persecuted for, yeah. So, as long as I'm carrying out the will, the way of Jesus Christ, if I'm persecuted for that, he said, I'm going to be blessed for that. So when somebody persecutes you for following in the will and the way of Jesus Christ, just be happy. Know that you're reaping benefits from that. But in this case, Bless them which persecute you. Bless and what? Curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. So what do we see here? We see, we see, we see bless, we see rejoice, and we see weep. Aren't we doing all that today? We're doing all those things, things today. We're God's children. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. We've all heard the, we've all heard the, the creed of two wrongs don't make a... Right. Yeah, exactly. Here we go, verse 17. The illustration with Brother Paul. It's just made up, by the way. He didn't do anything. <laughs> Recompense to no man evil... For evil, there's your two wrongs, do not make a right. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If 
it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not your selves. Avenge not your selves, God says. But rather give place unto what? This is God talking. You know what God's saying? Instead of you avenging yourself, my child, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Because my wrath is coming through. And you've got a choice, my child. You can avenge yourself and I'll stand down. Or you can have such faith in me to know that when I tell you that wrath is going to be coming through, that you believe that so much, that your faith becomes so strong in what I've told you, that it's easy for you to just do this. Sit down and get out of his way. That's what he's telling us. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written... Vengeance is mine. Listen to this. I will repay, saith the Lord. I think once the Holy Spirit kicks us in our heart's doors with that, we have to be fools not to get out of the way. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him the drink. For in doing so, thou. He gives us the power. He gives us the power. Thou shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Evil with good. That's how we apply it to our lives. That's the understanding of faith that we have in order. To, but you know, in order to have this program, church, ladies and gentlemen, young people, old people, in order to have this program of all these promises that we've just read, everything that we've just seen Solomon partake of, everything that we've seen take place in the Holy Scriptures, in order to have this, we have to have the operating system, don't we, Ed? John, or all of our tech brats. In order to have the program, you're going to have to have an operating system that's going to run the program. And that operating system that we have to have is called Jesus Christ. It's called salvation. We must have that. And as we have that, if you'll turn to, if, I want to tell you how to get this. Romans chapter number 10. Please, everybody look at this. Unless your heart is so hardened against God, you can't see his word. There you go. That's a challenge. Romans chapter number 10. Here's how to get the operating system that promises all these things. For see, you have no way to understand what God is saying without the operating system. You have no way to implement what God is saying without the operating system. So in Romans 10, 9, the word of God says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart you notice there's two things going on here. Confessing him with your mouth. Huh? Confessing him with your mouth. We love our children. We're not ashamed. We'll confess that's my child. He does the same thing with you and I. He loves you and I. We're his children. If we've come to know him through Jesus Christ, and we've, we've been adopted, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. He's my father my spiritual father, and I'm his child. And I call out, and I believe in my heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Watch what the scripture says, church. Thou shalt be saved. There is no discretion there. Thou shalt be saved. 
oh, but, oh, but then I can't, I can't hang out in the corner with the guys tomorrow at the office and, 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 and talk about the things we talk about and the things that we do, this and that, this and that, and this and that, and this and that, and this and that. That's got nothing to do with what this said. That has absolutely nothing to do with what this said. This is the foundation. This is clear in a slate like David. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Remember, he stores up that wisdom for the righteous. But the scripture saith, whoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Look at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, there again, shall be saved. You say, well, this, you're boring me, preacher. Well, I'm going to plug myself because God does it right here. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? It's the way God does business, folks. It's the way he does business. You're not going to go out in the woods and get a tree to talk to you. It's not what's well, not his plan. And, and how shall they preach except they be sent? It is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I'm not taking off my shoes so you can see my feet. Verse number 17, so faith cometh by hearing. I gave you some connectors today. I've done some illustrations. Those don't count much. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, not the word of Bob. By the word of God. Amen? Amen. That's how you get the operating system. If you want to be a benefactor of all the aforementioned things we've talked about in the Holy Scriptures today, you need that operating system with Jesus Christ. So we're going to stand. Brother Adolf's going to come. We're going to have an, offer, an inventory. See how I think? An offertory? An inventory? <laughs> inventory? I'm inventorying you all. It's time for me to get out of here. <laughs> An invitation. As Adolf begins to sing, don't hesitate. If you need to step out of this altar, that's what it's for. God has sanctified this as holy ground. This is a place where you come to worship him, to lift him up. It's a place where you can come and bring your burdens to him at the altar. You can be not ashamed of the one that's not ashamed of you. Whatever the need is, you come. If you need me to pray with you, I will. 393, 393, take my life and let it be. 393.